بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وختاب نبيين ورحمة للعالمين ودعيا إلا الله بإذنه والسراج منير عما بد What is our greatest achievement in life? What is it that we're really searching for in our life? What is the greatest achievement of a human being? What is the greatest achievement of a Muslim? For sure all of you would agree with me that the greatest achievement that anyone can have, the greatest success, the real true success that a human being can have in their life is to go to paradise, to go to Jannah, to go to paradise with the believers, to have the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be in the favors of Allah our Lord, and to have His mercy and His compassion upon us to enter us into Jannah forever. For sure this is the greatest achievement. But what is its price? What price would you be willing to pay to enter into Jannah? What could you think that you would be able to bargain yourself with to go to paradise, to go to heaven? What is it that you would be willing to give up? What is it that you would be willing to do? This is what we intend to discuss. Is the price of paradise. Because we have a big problem today, and it's not a problem that is just shared by myself. It is not a problem that's just shared by some Muslims. It is not a problem that's just shared in some areas. It is a vast, overwhelming problem that the majority, if not all the Muslims of the world face. Is that we live in a time where Islam is on the forefront of the world scene. Everyone's talking about Islam. It's the wrong people with the wrong message indeed, but everyone is talking about Islam. And most of it is negative, most of it is misinformation, and most of it is wrong. So we are left at the mercy of the non-Muslims, we are left at the mercy of the media, we are left at the mercy of every whim and every way that you can imagine that people come up with to bash Islam, to harm Muslims, and we do a lot of complaining about this issue. I hear Muslims all over the world complaining about this issue of Islam and of Muslims and of our situation and of our problems. And overwhelmingly, we all are begging that something happen and something change. And that Allah Azawajal has favor upon us and helps us and gives us dignity and gives us glory and gives us victory. There's a dua that I hear very frequently, that I've heard at every masajid that I've been to, that I've heard all of the imams, that I've stood behind during the Ramadan, during the Tarawih Salat, and <clears throat> I've heard it from the members of uh, many, uh, many a khutbah, I've used it myself, and I've never really questioned its meaning, as in to question how do we achieve this dua, why is it that so many people are begging Allah for this dua, the answer to this dua, and it's not happening? And most of you have heard this dua. It goes a little something like, Allahumma ansur islami wal muslimin. Or Allahumma ansur wa izza islami wal muslimin. Ya arham ar rahimin. O oh Allah, give help to Islam and the Muslims, or give help and dignity, izza, dignity to Islam and the Muslims, oh, most merciful of the merciful. And everyone will cry behind you when you say this dua, Ameen, Ya Allah, Ameen, Oh Allah, accept this from us, please, give us this help, give us this dignity, give Islam this izza that it once had. And I was once questioning myself a couple of years ago, as to, okay, there are so many people that are begging Allah for this help, this nasr, and begging Allah for this izzah, 
this dignity. So what is it that we are doing? Or what is it that we are not doing? Oh Allah that is allowing this dua not to be answered or is preventing you from giving us the answer to this dua to give us this nasr, to give us this izzah, to give us help and dignity that we need, that we deserve, that Islam once had, that Muslims once had. What is it, O oh Allah, that we are doing or not doing that is preventing us from this? And one day I was reading through the Quran, I was, a couple of years ago, I was um, memorizing Surah Al-Saf and I was sitting with my Sheikh and we began to read Surah Al-Saf a very beautiful Surah MashaAllah but what really caught my attention was when we got to Ayat 10 and the three Ayats that follow it and I wanted <laughs> to go and bang my head against the wall because here was the answer to this Dua here was the answer to all of the problems of all of the Muslims and the human beings all over the world in very simple language, in very simple terminology, in a very simple formula that Allah has given us as the solution to this problem and as the price of paradise. SubhanAllah. Allah asks us in Surah Al-Saf, I want you to pay attention to the way that Allah begs uh, uh, attention from our souls. He, he calls to the attention of our souls with this wordings. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Saf, Ayat 10, مَعُوضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ أَمَّنُوا هَلْ عَدُوا لَكُمْ عَلَى تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِينْكُمْ مِنْ أَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Allah says, O oh, you who possess Iman, O oh, you who believe, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. And uh, according to the greatest mufassirs of the Quran, people like Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, they said, whenever you see this wording, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, Pay dear attention and close attention to it because either Allah is going to warn you of something you should avoid or He's going to tell you of something of great importance. And this one is one of the greatest for our situation today, for the situation that we face. Allah says, O you who believe, O you who possess Iman, can I show you a commodity? Can I show you a transaction? May I show you a trade? that will prevent you from a painful punishment. SubhanAllah. Allah, Rabbil Alameen, Lord of everything that exists, is asking me and you if He can show us something that will prevent Him from having to punish us. And for sure this is a rhetorical question because only someone who has lost their faculty of mind, someone who ha has become majnoon, insane, would say, you know what, no that's okay, Allah just take the punishment, I'll deal with it, it can't be that bad, don't show me anything, I'll just deal with it. If you are of that nature, then I suggest you contact your closest psychologist or imam and, and try to get some counseling, because you have indeed lost your mind. So it's a rhetorical question, Allah is asking us, can I show you something that will prevent you from a painful punishment? SubhanAllah. And the trade or the commodity or the transaction that Allah wants to show us is a very beautiful formula that has three parts that will prevent us from not only a painful punishment, will grant us everything we want in this life, everything we want in the hereafter, will solve all of our problems of all of the Muslims in all of the world, and is also the key of the price of paradise. And what is this formula? We have two of the three. There's three steps and we have two of them. Almost everyone that is a Muslim who says that they are Muslim has these two steps. What we miss, what we are lacking severely is the third one. And the formula goes as such. <laughs> 